The Buffer Tube. The scourge of the AR world. It's like the crazy ex-girlfriend that you can't seem to shake. If we could just get rid of them, we would be free and life would be beautiful. Well, I'm not sure that CMMG has any relationship advice, and I know that I sure don't, but CMMG has come up with a way to ditch the buffer tube on your AR. I've been a huge fan of CMMG for a very long time. In fact, I still have my first CMMG, an original mutant now called the Mark 47. I love how they keep pushing the industry. Back in the day, it was the Mutant, a mid-sized receiver set that took AK mags. Then they made an AR in almost every caliber known to man. Then it was radial delayed blowback, which is a bigger deal than I think they get credit for. And now they have ditched the buffer tube and contained the recoil system inside the upper for the descent. A huge thanks goes out to today's sponsor, Midwest Gunworks. Midwest Gunworks is unique. They offer gunsmithing on most any brand or model you can think of. To offer that level of service requires them to keep a massive amount of parts on hand, and they also make those parts available to the consumer. When you go to the website, there's a parts finder right on the top of the screen, allowing you to search by make and model. You can also search by brand. As you can see, they have a ton, and let's just select HK. We'll live large and select HK Mark 23. An exploding drawing comes up, and I can check on the red number right next to the part that I need, and that part automatically comes up. Now, they don't have this for every gun, but they do have it for a lot of guns. I am a huge fan of Midwest Gunworks, especially when you need to find that hard to find part that you may not even know what exactly is, so go check them out. The big deal with the Descent is of course the fact that it does not need a buffer, a buffer tube, castle nut, or any of that to operate. Everything is contained in the upper receiver. It just has a pick rail on the back of the lower to allow the attachment of whatever brace or stock you want. And of course, all NFA rules apply, and I did opt for an SBR. The Descent is so compact and lightweight. I have the six and a half inch barreled version, and without a stock, it has an overall length of only 15.7 inches and weighs in at a mere 4.6 pounds, which is crazy small and covert. This would make a great truck gun or even as a nightstand gun for when things go bump in the night. Plus, since we don't have a buffer tube, I can use a compact folding stock like this one from JMAC Customs, which works great without adding much length or weight to the package. This is a 9mm descent and it is available in three different mag styles. You can get a lower that will accept Glock mags, Sig P320 mags, or like the one I have, the AR style 9mm mags. While they all have their benefits, for me I like the AR style because this is an SBR and down the road if I want to get say a 300 blackout or 556 or any other AR pattern caliber, I can merely switch the upper and I'll be ready to go with just the one stamp. It allows a good bit of versatility. Bufferless radial delayed blowback may very well be the best operating system for a pistol caliber carbine available today. There I said it, throwing stuff at the screen or shooting me the bird won't take it back, but now I'm going to back that up. First of all, CMMG has confined the entire recoil mechanism to the bolt carrier group and this feat alone is extremely impressive. As you can see, the recoil springs are located at the back of the bolt, and these allow the gun to cycle without the need of a buffer tube and a conventional AR recoil system. When you think about that, CMMG has eliminated a lot of parts and weight by doing that, as well as giving the user the ability to get different stocks. If it's an SBR or braces, they're currently legal again. Hopefully someday we can stop checking the calendar to find out if braces are legal or not. But the big deal is you can get one that folds, giving you a very compact package. This also allows the movement of the charging handle to be forward on the gun. In my opinion, this is a better placement point for the charging handle. This allows the user to maintain cheek weld and strong hand control when manipulating the weapon. The charging handle is also non-reciprocating. This is another really big deal. And for wrong-handed shooters, the charging handle can be swapped to the right side of the gun. So that pretty much covers the recoil system. Now on to the operating system. Radial delayed blowback is superior to the majority of 9mm subguns available and here's why. 
that delay is a big deal. It's very similar to the MP5 system that many people, including myself, would say is the best operating system. But that slight delay allows the gun to run smoother, cleaner, quieter, and with less recoil than any other operating system. Let's start with direct blowback. Direct blowback is the operating system used by the vast majority of pistol caliber carbines or subguns on the market. It's okay, it gets the job done, it's usually fairly cheap to produce. The bad part is the bolt carrier needs to be weighed down significantly to slow the action, causing the system to be unusually heavy and also makes recoil harsher than you would expect from 9mm. They also get very dirty very quickly, and this can lead to some reliability issues as the gun does build up dirt. Guns that use this system consist of the CZ Scorpion, almost all AR9s like the Novesky Space Invader, and almost any other subgun you can think of uses direct blowback. Let's talk about how the radial delayed blowback system is quieter. Piston operated subguns and piston clap. The SIG MPX utilizes a piston operated system and while I think that is a very good system for rifle calibers, it may not translate to 9mm as well. When you suppress the MPX and use good subsonic ammo along with a good 9mm can, you can actually hear the piston striking the bolt known as piston clap. With a really good suppressor, it can become the loudest thing that you hear when firing. While it's not a huge problem, one of the coolest things about 9mm subguns is how great they suppress and piston clap can put a damper on that. Radial delayed blowback is very similar to roller delayed blowback utilized in the MP5. But having the descent being basically an AR, those accessories are going to be far more numerous and far more affordable for the descent, making the descent far easier to customize. CMMG has a phenomenal product in the descent 9mm because they can offer the superiority of the radial delayed blowback operating system. Combine that with the descent bufferless recoil system while combining all that with the familiarity and parts availability of the AR-15 platform. Radial Delayed gives you basically all the benefits of Roller Delayed Blowback and this gun has been 100% reliable for us through the more than 1000 rounds we put through it and that was a mix of supers and subs from Callaway Ballistics. With several different suppressors, this gun is phenomenally reliable but really I've come to expect nothing less from CMMG. The lower features magazine release on both sides of the gun with an oversized bolt hold open and bolt release. The ambi safety is nice because CMMG has made the right side very thin so it won't interfere with your grip and is a very nice touch. The 9mm descent also has an internal ejector in the upper. This tier descent comes with a trigger tech trigger and while I have several trigger tech triggers in some of my bolt guns, this is the first time using one in a gas gun and let me say I am extremely impressed. This trigger is so nice, on my scale it is pulling at just under 4 pounds, but it's one of those triggers that is so nice and so crisp it feels way lighter than what the scale is reading. The reset is short and crisp as well, everything about this trigger is top notch. CMMG has also made some pretty spectacular upgrades to their handguard since the last time we reviewed one. It's of course M-Lock at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock with full pick rail across the top. It also has these lightning cuts in it which look cool, but what really impresses me is they have these pins that connect it to the upper to increase rigidity and ensure alignment. Probably not a big deal on this 9mm, but a very nice touch for other calibers, especially when you may want to add a laser aiming device on the handguard. We used some pretty spectacular accessories while filming the CMMG Descent. For suppressors, we primarily used the Resilient RS9 and the Dead Air Mojave 9. The RS9 is an amazing subgun specific can that is shockingly quiet and has a really cool unique look. We already have a video up on that if you want to go check it out. The Mojave 9 is Dead Air's first journey into 3D printed suppressors and is also extremely impressive. It's modular, crazy lightweight, stupid quiet, and we'll have a video out on that soon. We also use the Primary Arms SLX MD25 Red Dot. This has been a very solid little red dot and been doing a great job for us. I actually have a couple of them and they've been doing great. Thinking about making a torture test video on one and if that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments section. 
I've been a fan of CMMG for a long time and I love how they keep improving their products even when I didn't think it was possible. They had a really solid lineup and they came out with radial delayed action. I thought that was as good as it could get and now they've added bufferless recoil with the Descent series. Truly amazing how they continue to push the envelope and I can't wait to see what else they have in the pipeline. This is such a well thought out subgun coming from a company that has been making and developing subguns for a long time. I'm so happy to have one in my collection. My only regret is that CMMG just came out with a descent for the Mark 47 or Mutant and this lower won't take AK mags, so there may even be one more CMMG in my future. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because as always, we have some really big reviews in the works that you won't want to miss. If you want to know what those reviews are way before they hit the YouTube channel, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter where you can see what's being reviewed in real time. And by the way, check the links in the description there. You can find some cool stuff that I found and the best deals on it. If you want to help support Alabama Arsenal, the absolute best way to do that is through Patreon. These videos can be surprisingly expensive to make and every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. There is also Alabama Arsenal gear available right below the video if you want to go out and represent. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.